Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Leopard Prototype A. It's a tier 9 German medium tank. It's located on the north westbourne of Fjords and it's under the command of Blackstreet Mr. White. Now, this is actually his EU account. Uh, he actually has two other accounts, or rather, one other account which is his NA1 and another which is for his daughter. He sent us in three replays, and we're doing them all together in one video. And starting off with the Leopard game. Well, the Leopard prototype was the German version of the Euro standardised European tank. As you know, uh, that ended up in the Leopard eventually. But it's, um, it's a relatively fast medium with a very good gun, but virtually no armour. After all, you don't need armour if uh, you don't get hit because you're too quick for the enemy to hit you. It's got a 105mm gun which is capable of doing, so pull this up, 420 alpha. And with standard APCR it will go through 278mm with the premium APCR it'll actually go through 323 and with the HE rounds, it will do 510, but it'll only go through 105 millimeters. But that's still pretty good. Of course, the armor isn't that strong. So you don't really want to get hit by the enemy if you can help it. Decided to let the cram barn go ahead. Meanwhile, he just takes out the EBR 105 with one shot. It's only 289. He had been hit before, but obviously very nice to take out the wheelie. One less worry. Okay, we've got a T54 ahead of us. Okay, cram barn's going to push him. After he's taken a couple of rounds, we'll blow in. Oh, now an MX 50 b turned up as well. Let's see if we can finish him off. Yep. And ouch, took a round from the AMX 50 and we got Amorax. He's fixed the Amorax and he's moving on. You notice he's got a manual fire extinguisher here. I think most people use uh, the um, the automatic one because it's so much quicker in the time it takes you to uh, get to that um, button the six button it's normally six but it's got it on the five one you can usually lose uh, at least 50 maybe a more in hit points standard reload is over 10 seconds he's managed to get it down to 9.68 so he's got a reasonably fast reload and he's taking that long look at the enemy from a distance pulling back it's the um, situational awareness look okay so we know there's an E50 down at the end the EBR's decided to go down the uh, the route next to the water but he's coming back up again there's the E50 Got a shot. yeah nice 480 high roll No. You get the leopard from here. Yes, he does. High roll again, 445. He's a one shot now. And he's gone. So missed out on the chance to get the kill, but I think that was just down to the roll more than anything. Okay, the E50's had to pull away because he's actually been focused on by our guys around the corner. And it looks like this game is in the bag as it's 11-2. Can we get the kill on the E50? Well, he gets one round in, but he takes a round from the E50, but he's got plenty to spare. And he's platooned with somebody else because they both got three kills. In fact, it was the strip 103-0, and the E50's down, but there are still two enemies to go. And there's the Conqueror gun carriage. Can he get the kill on the M53, M55 to get... Oh no, he missed out the Puscucci's. But that is the end of the game. And it's victory.
Here's the results of the first game. Uh, that was the second class tanker for Black Street, Mr. White. He managed to get uh, a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four, five for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. Because he actually destroyed two enemy vehicles with, or tank destroyers, with a medium tank in a battle, he, one tier higher than him, he got a level slaves medal. And because he platooned with somebody else who had at least three kills, he got a brothers in arms as well. Let's have a look at team score. Well, in this one, he didn't get the highest damage. No, that went to the Cranvar and got 3,799 hit points, but he didn't survive the game. Second highest damage was the AE phase one with 3,261. And the third highest damage was the Badger with 3,051. Blackstreet Mr. White managed to get, uh, uh, obviously Blue Streak Mr. White managed to get 2,886 from that one which actually puts him in fourth place on damage overall, but he's top on number of kills with four. Three kills went to the Badger and also to the Strip 103 that he platooned with. When it came to base XP, he's actually in second place because the AE Phase 1 managed to get 1,066. 993 went to Black Street, Mr. White, uh, or Blue Street. I'd never get that right. Uh, 897 went to the EBR 105. Okay, let's have a look at detail. Nine shots fired, eight direct hits, eight penetrations on the enemy, 2,886 hit points of damage, of which 858 were at more than 300 meters. Two hits received, both penetrated. Yeah, the armor is absolutely negligible. Well, really, what do you expect? They made the vehicle go fast uh, with a really great gun, but they really didn't expect it to get penetrated, or if it did, that it'd be put out of action straight away. Six enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, 67 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 28,940 credits, and after repair and ammunition resupply, took away 24,026 credits. He earned 993 XP times 4 for the first victory, 5,960 taken away altogether. So that's the end of the first game. Let's have a look at the second one. The second battle is in the T-54 first prototype, the Tier 8 Soviet Medium. We're on the north spawn of mines, and battle's about to commence. Now this is actually a variant of a T-44, not a T-54. It was uh, first designed in 1944, and they put together the first prototype in that year, or 1945, depending on your point of view. They won't actually specify when it was actually put forward. Uh, it wasn't accepted. It did go through trials in 1945, but it wasn't accepted, and I think they they rejected both the T-44 and the uh, T-54. They just weren't up to specifications. Plus, of course, they did have a lot of tanks already, and I guess they didn't need to modernise any further because, of course, the war had ended, and therefore there was no need to actually manufacture more armaments. It's got a 100mm gun, which, as you can see there, is capable of 250 alpha, penetrating 190mm with standard ammo. And with the premium ammo, the APCR, it will go through 247mm. And it's also got AT rounds, which will do 330 alpha, but they've got a 50mm penetration. It is basically uh, a slower but um, more heavily armoured version of the C44, you might say. It's a premium tank, so you can buy it in the gift shop or uh, purchase it uh, for bombs, I believe. Nice shot into the charioteer, got him in the rear. But he was spotted because he was just too close to the bushes. Blue Streak, Mr. White. I can't remember if it's Blue Streak or Black Streak. He'll have to. He'll correct me on this. It's his NA account. This game. As you can see, it's quite slow. It's not as fast as the other. Oh, T34-3 came out. That's the Chinese. Maximum speed's only 44 kilometers an hour, but that 100 millimeter gun is actually fairly capable. He's also bounced around from a third man. It just goes to show how tough the armour is. Gets the isolating shots on the T-34-3. Knocks his tracks off. And go for it again. Keep him there. And he's dead. There you go. Nice aiming. Oh, no, that was bad. Just lost the VK-101P, but he was killed by the third man. So the third man's now turned sideways. 
just got hit in the gun by the SU-101, so we know there's two tank destroyers on that corner. Can't see the Ferdinand now, but he is very low on hit points. Standard reload is 7.67 seconds. He's managed to get down to 6.72, which is a second off. He's waiting here for the moment. He's in nice position in cover. RT-34-3 has moved up to the rock so he can shoot at the hill. But, whoa, look at that. Shell went right over the top of us from that SU-101. But he can't hit us now because we're around the corner. And that means the rocks are in the way. Okay, from this position, or moving up to the rocks a little closer, he might be able to get shots on the enemy on the south part of the hill. Well, that didn't penetrate. But it did hit him. Can he get a shot to the whizzy? Blaming for... Oh, we've got that one onto the side of the vehicle. You can see the mark where it actually hit, but he'll easily penetrate the Jetto. Yep, no problem with that. And he's got a clean kill. That's two. Oh, well, T-34-3 just exploded. And it was a Borsig who got him. And the ball seek is on the corner. So, and now we're getting the T32 firing his 90mm at us, or is that a 105mm from the damage? That was a high roll into the whizzy. Can he go for another one? No, it shot over the engine deck. Normally the gun handling is very good on this. Uh, well, it's not it's not great, but um You'd expect the shells to go where you want them to. Oh, he's been spotted again. Yeah, I'm worried about that uh, Borsig if he tries to get another shot in. And this time around we've got a Schwartz Panzer and a T-32 both firing in this direction. They're obviously very concerned about his position here and that's why they're hiding behind the rocks. But the good news is that that means that our guys are not getting so many shots from the enemy on the north side of the hill. Although nobody's actually captured the hill as yet. He's side scraping out. Nope. No shot on the VK. He's up at the center line. These other guys, yeah, they're, they're all well hidden. They know they're in danger if they try and go out in the open. Wow, the Wizzy 111 made a bit of a mistake there. Moved forward and took a round in the side. This time round, the gun didn't let us down. Still no shot on the VK. He'd have to move closer to the next rock over. There's a little rock to the right, a little further close to the river and or the inlet. And that might be the place to go. It is a little more dangerous receiving fire from the enemy. Ah, the SU-101 has come out from his position. He is kind of exposed now, and the SU-130PM on our team might be able to get a shot at him. And he did! He did get a shot, he got a big shot. So, acting as bait, Mr. White has actually enabled the SU-130PM to put a huge hit into that SU-101. You notice the SU-130PM is sitting on the island, so he could actually see him. Ow, we get another hit from that T-32. Now, if we had actually moved up to that rock, we would be facing that SU-101 SU directly, but he's just taken another hit from the SU-130PM, and of course, we got the spotting assist. Go for the top. Nope, didn't get the Capola, and he took another round from the T-32. Now he's a one-shot. He can't afford to take any hits, and the SU-130PM finishes the SU-101 off. But there's still that Ferdinand... Now, before he can get the kill shot on the Ferdinand, the Ferdinand's killed by RSU-101, and now we've got a Borsig. He's got very little armor, so everything we fire at him is probably going to yield credits. 
Oh, no, we didn't get the kill. That was the SU-101 on our team again. He's also on the island near the SU-130PM. This is good now because we're actually getting support from our teammates whilst he's acting as bait. And the SU-1, the BK did pull back, which is bad news for him. If we can get another round through him, need the premium ammo really more than anything at this point. Go for the top of the turret, or the side of the turret rather. He's loading the premium. Oh, if only he pulled back again. He's gone back behind the rocks. And say at this moment, patience, just wait for them to move. That T-32, though, delights in putting rounds into us. Be nice to finish him off with one shot. There he is, he's on the move. Just the top of his turret at the moment. He's aiming at the island. Yes! Excellent shot, went right into the cupola. Finish him off, and now we we'll go for the T28 prototype. But no, it hits the wreck. Hit the wreck of the Progetto. Go for the turret. Yes, he gets it. 266. Another high roll. And he's finished off by the T32 on our team. There's only three enemies remaining now. The Schwartz Panzer, who's had a go at us. A Wizzy 111. And the last one's the T26E5 Patriot. And we don't know where he is, but I don't think he's over this side of the battlefield, so obviously we can move up. Yep, they're all over the other side, so no need to worry. We can just quickly move up, get position, so we can attack. And he's decided not to go around the back. There goes the Patriot. There's only one enemy left now. It's the Schwarzpanzer. He's down in that dip there. And he's gone. So this one is a victory. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was a first class tank again for Mr. White in the T-54 first prototype. He got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. In fact, on that South Island, he was spotting a lot for his teammates. He also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got six, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, a fire effect for doing more damage than hit points to his own vehicle, and a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. He managed to get a Spartan medal because he ricocheted a non-penetrating shot when he had less than 10% of his health left. He also got a Brothers in Arms because he platooned with the SU-101 on his team. They both had at least three kills. He got a Confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team, as well as a Steel Wall for blocking the most damage in the team in that game. Let's have a look at the team scores. Well, we can see he didn't get the highest damage in the game. In fact, that went to the SU-130PM that he was providing the spotting for. That guy got 3,184 hit points of damage, whilst uh, Mr. White managed 2,796. And the third highest damage was, lo and behold, that T-32, the guy who was sniping him from the hill, 2,749 went to him. When it came to kills, he did share the top spot with the SU-101. They both had three kills. Two kills went to the T-32 and the SU-130PM. Nobody on the enemy team managed to get more than one kill. When it came to base XP, he's got the top on that one as well. 1,219, but that was not enough for an ace tanker. 1,058 went to the SU-130PM and 952 went to the T-32. I think that uh, figure there um, was actually expanded or increased by the fact he was doing all that spotting. Let's have a look at detail. 26 shots fired, 18 direct hits, 12 penetrations. The gun handling did let him down, actually. He didn't get as many accurate shots. If he had, I think his score would have been a lot higher and maybe he would have had the highest damage in the game. He did manage to get uh, 2,796 hit points of damage, 1,576 of which was at more than 300 meters. Those were the shots onto the South Hill. He received 12 hits from the enemy, Four of those were penetrations, mostly from the T-32, seven non-penetrations, which bounced off the armour, including a Ferdinand shots, and also one hit by way of splash damage. 2,840 hit points of damage blocked by armour, that's quite a lot. 
one enemy vehicle spotted, nine enemy vehicles damaged, three killed, and there's the spotting, 1,942. Yeah, that's what earned him such a high base XP in the game. He earned 66,393 credits, so the game got 40,000 for completing a mission, and after repair, ammunition, respawn, and consumables, took away a profit of 77,123 credits on a free-to-play account. 1,219 base XP, times two for the first victory, 122 for this being a premium vehicle, he took away 2,560 experience points altogether. So that's the third and the second battle results. Let's have a look at the third battle. The third game is in the KV-1, the Tier 5 Soviet heavy tank. He's located, or rather it's his daughter, <laughs> Mr. Pint's daughter, located on the north spawn of Serene Coast. Well, that's the 85mm gun, that's unmistakable. It's got an alpha of, if I remember correctly, 160. Let's have a check on that. Yep, 160 alpha, 120mm with standard rounds. It goes up to 161 with the AP, APCR. And with the HE rounds, you can do 280 alpha, but you'll only penetrate 43mm. Well, there are some tanks in this game where he should be able to penetrate them because, uh, after all, there is uh, some T67, was it T67, the no, Chaffee, um, what else, an M10, yes, easily be able to penetrate those with HG rounds. Okay, the KV-1, ubiquitous KV-1, designed and developed in 1938. The Germans knew about them because obviously uh, they were, had fairly good relations with the um, Soviet army up until that point. In fact, um, they shared a lot of uh, uh, the design features and showed each other what sort of vehicles they actually had uh, before the war. So surprising that the uh, Germans were caught out by the, uh, the strength of the KV-1, the fact they had such tough armour. 110 millimeters of the uh, front of the turret sides and rear 75 millimeters at the front and sides on the hull only 70 at the rear though Easily able to penetrate the chaffee with the standard AP round Easily able to go through the Panzer Fiat Alcelon H as well and this Leopard well He's not gonna feel much better either And he's gonna be out the game in one shot And there you go well, Milan has suffered some damage. Can take out the Panzer Fiat. No, nope, somebody else got that. There's an SU-85 over there. He's got relatively little armour as well. But what he does have is an 85mm gun. And that was very nicely done, that was. Didn't expose too much and managed to pump the round into a weak spot. And there goes the chappy. That M10 is not going to do so well. Oh, there's a Matilda Black Prince. Now, he does have reasonable armour, so you will need the arm piercing on that one. You won't be able to do that with HE. But he takes out the M10. Well, she takes out the M10 RBFM. And now she's going for the Matilda. Having no problem penetrating that with standard ammo. Oh, finally took a 75mm round from the Matilda. Is it 76mm, actually? I think it's 75 actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a 75 millimeter. Well, the Matilda's down. Who's next? There's nobody else on the peninsula, but the thing is, there's probably some TDs waiting for us. In fact, the enemy does have three TDs, a Stug 4, a Stug 3G, and an M10 RBFM, and I wouldn't be surprised if one of them was waiting to pump around into Milan. Six cents did go off, so somebody saw her. Chaffee's moving up. He's found the Stug 4. Okay, the Stungschutz Deer. Yeah, I looked to be on target, but it hit the ground, so obviously he pulled back far enough. The M10 can't get a shot on him at the moment. He's pulled back over the ridge line. I'm pretty sure that Stug's still there. Again, that kicked up ground, so. He didn't hit him. She didn't hit him. That is the RT. And she took a big hit there. 168. It was a standard HE round. 
but she's very low on hit points now, only 240, and the Snug is trying to penetrate with a 75mm gun. And finally, she killed him. That's her top gun. And the M10's now starting to pump rounds in. I think he's behind that bush. Yes, there he is. Okay, one shot should be enough. Oh! And in fact, actually, the M10 got taken out the split second later by the Striv M42. But unfortunately, he did get Milan. But she's done enough to get her top gun. And the battle is all but over. The Sturmgeschutz 3 aus Rungji is the last one. And there you go. That's him. Here's the end of battle results, and that was a first-class tanker for Milan in the KV-1. Managed to get a bruise in the middle for getting at least five critical hits, got five exactly. A Judas for taking down two tanks who damaged her, and a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of her own vehicle. She got a high caliber. She dealt the most damage in the game, 20% of the enemy hit pool, and she did get that top gun uh, just before she got uh, wiped out. She killed the uh, Stug Fear, who was hiding in the bushes, unseen. Managed to get a blind kill. Uh, unfortunately, then was taken out after being hit by the RT and uh, the M10. So, uh, let's have a look at team score. Highest damage, 2,191 hit points of damage. The second highest being the Fifi, who got 1,832. And third, the Panzer T25, who got 1,364. When it came to kills, she got the highest number of those with six. Four kills went to the Strib M42, two kills to the T34 Shielded. And when it came to base XP, yep, she's got the top in all three columns. 1,155 went to the um, Milan. 943 went to the Panzer T25. 670 went to the Fifi. She fired 19 rounds, got 16 direct hits and 15 penetrations. Damage of 2,191 hit points, of which 283 were at more than 300 meters. 16 hits received from the enemy, 8 penetrations, 7 non-penetrations, and 1 hit received by way of splash damage. Yep, that was from the RT. 740 hit points of damage blocked by armor, 5 enemy vehicles spotted, 8 enemy vehicles damaged, 6 killed, and 709 hit points of damage assistance. She earned 32,429 credits on a premium count, and after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables took away a profit of 39,822 credits. 1,155 XP times 2 for the first victory, 3,466 experience points altogether. So three very interesting battles. Um, the KV-1 was a bit uh, frenetic. The uh, T-54 first prototype um, battle was a little more, well, should we say static, but he was shooting at long range and it was very difficult because the enemy kept on getting good shots on him. And, of course, the first battle with the Leopard prototype um, that was a little easier because, of course, he's got that great 105mm gun. And, of course, after dealing with the uh, tanks in the uh, uh, Eastern Passage, he was able to then shoot at long range at the enemy. Uh, except, of course, right at the very end where he came around the corner to try and get some last bits of damage. I hope you enjoyed all three games. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And do share our channel and the sister channel, we've got The General, which ha features some really great replays without any commentary. But uh, they are beautifully put together, at least I think they are, uh, to make it sure that you can actually uh, see exactly what other players are doing. And uh, you might find them interesting. Thanks for watching.